so we eventually figured out that the, it's the it's the switching time uh, of the power that is most critical, and that is achieved in lots of different ways. And this machine is done mechanically, but it can also be done with electronic switches. So, then you know, Kirikai switch is the key. Here's the results to that if you like to keep it. So, uh, as you. Um, in the original one that we showed you the first time in this room, the little tiny one. It was only capable of handling about 30 watts. We had more trouble with the switching arrangement than that. It was very, very difficult to scale it up. Since that time, Eric has developed a new control module and a new switching module. And we've had a larger set of capacitors to, to store the energy. This is the control. Yeah. And this is the switching. Switching, right. And this is the capacitor to store energy. Yes. Yes. Energy to switch the capacitor to switch the switch 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 to switch the and it allows us to control the wave function geometry, which in turn gives you the resulting change in efficiencies that we're going to show you. Now, we have it set right now to imitate approximately the results we gave you the first time. We're so in this resistor, which is the load now, we are dissipating about 30, a little less than 32 watts. But from the line, from the line we're pulling uh, almost 11 watts, 10.97, 10.98 watts. Now, what we're going to show you is, and the reason I have the scope on here is so that you can watch the waveforms change in accordance with the changing efficiencies that we're going to show you. Eric, you want to take over and, and let's, the first thing we ought to do is probably bring it down. Bring it down. Now, what he's doing now, if you watch the waveforms changing, you can see that the geometry of the waves changes in accordance with, with the results. We are now dialing down so that the input power is only... That's all the way down for the current setting I have. Okay, so right now we're only pulling 1.5 watts from the wall, and we're still giving you 33 watts. <laughs> 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 But we'll leave this setting fixed for the moment. Eric, crank it up. Now, we're going to show you that we're not limited anymore to 30 watts. So now we've got 100 watts in the load, and we're pulling 5 watts. That's 2,000%. ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。
dissipating 102 watts in the resistor, but we're sending back 30 watts to the power company. <laughs> now, the implications of that, if we can marry this with even your standard wind generators right now, the power that's going back will help it to turn like a motor, and you'll operate with less wind. <laughs> That's so one of the applications. <laughs> For starters. <laughs> so now, 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 question. In relation, in, relation, in relation to the mix you're getting from the grid. Uh, yeah, it's starting to smoke. Turn it down. In, in, in relation to the, to, the, to, the, to the mix you're getting from the grid, you're getting, you're getting reactive energy and, and, uh, and, and yield. Energy. No, see, this is, well, yes and no. You have to understand that in a normal situation, reactive, reactive power is defined as a form of restorative power in which the average value is zero. Correct, yeah. The problem with that is that the current and the voltage are usually out of phase by 90 degrees, which means that you can't use it. Right. What this device allows you to do is to create watts that are doing the same thing of going back and forth. So the wattage becomes reactive. Wow. See, here, here's the thing. In Japan, average wind is like a two meters. So if we could bring it down to the top, we can rotate our prop by one meter wind. That makes a huge impact. Now. Yes. Well, as soon, as soon as we have the funds to do so, I would like to get a standard alternator that you guys use, or whatever kind of generator you use, and try to marry this system with that, put the instruments on it to see how fast it's turning, and then see what the effect is. Now, what, what effect, let's say, let's say on a global scale, you know, on I mean a large scale, say, say there's 100 million units like this in America. What effect would that have on the grid? Okay, that's a very interesting question, and I know the answer to it because I researched it thoroughly. Tesla himself said 100 years ago that if we used reactive power right. instead of the normal kilowatts, right. and he was referring to reactive kilowatts, not right. the normal reactor, right, right, right. that our present transmission grids could bear a thousand times the load that it can sustain right now for exactly the same fuel consumption. And that's what not an exaggeration. The, but, but the question was, the effect of this on a global scale with 100 million units in America, everybody having one of these, what would happen to the grid? <laughs> And the answer is that Tesla predicted a hundred years ago that if you did this judiciously and everybody was returning the majority of the power they were using back and forth, back and forth, that the same grids that we use now, the same generating facilities that we use now, could sustain a thousand times the power that we can deliver now for the same fuel consumption. <laughs> We've been ripped off. How, how do you meter it? Ah, that's where Tesla got killed. <laughs> well, no, you meter it the same way. The problem is it changes the economics of the thing drastically. <laughs> so, you know, that's why J.P. Morgan said, pardon me while I pull the plug. Yeah, right. But uh, if, if we get to the point in the world where this is the way to go, there has to be another means of, uh, of uh, reimbursement for everyone. The most important thing that we learned from this, guys, yeah. and you have to understand this, is that when the traditional power measurements are made, right. and everybody says, okay, if we hang a resistive load directly on an alternating current source, right. that is the closest thing we can come to 100% efficiency. Because I measure, let's say, 100 watts here, and I measure 100 watts at the source, and you can't do any better than that. Right. This proves that there's extra energy there, or I couldn't do this. That's right. No, but isn't, isn't that extra energy part of the phantom energy? or? Well, or, call it what you want. Right. It's still there. It's true. And what's interesting about it is 
Um, I mean, they know about this, but they just don't know how to capture it or whatever. Well, they don't know how to capture it because their thinking is wrong. But the other thing, it's kind of the I was just going to say, when Maxwell originally was doing his fundamental work on the transmission of energy, he made the assumption that all of the energy was carried only in the electric and magnetic fields. And he did all of his equation work from that. Years later, and it was like 30 years later, Einstein, the Einstein, and de Haas, who was another physicist, redid all of these experiments that uh, Maxwell had done at an earlier time. And they found that there was additional energy that was carried by the current itself, not by the fields. Mm. And they said, oh, well, it's a fairly sizable number, but we don't want to rock the boat and change all the equations, so they just let it alone. Gotcha. But there it is. That's right.